So, hi everyone, um, I'm Arissa and I'm one of the chemistry tutors with Lanterna. Um, so, thank you so much for tuning into our second video on 18.3. So, if you haven't already watched our previous 18.3 video, I'd strongly recommend it because it sets up the theoretical basis for a lot of the past paper questions that we're going to be looking at today. So definitely have a look at that video um, before this one, preferably. Um, okay, so what we're going to be looking at today is 18.3, the last higher level subtopic. And we're going to put your knowledge to the test using a couple of past paper questions. So let's get started with some paper ones in that case. So I've taken the screenshot of a paper one question from 2018. And this is question number 27. So which combination of acid and base is most likely to have a pH of 8.5 at the equivalence point. So remember, at the equivalence point, all the acid has been neutralized by the base. So at this point, we've only got salt and water. And they are asking us for which salt is going to be basic. So if you always think about it as a tug of war, which is the method that I sort of recommended in uh, my previous video, you're always looking for the midpoint. So for example, if you've got a strong acid and a strong base, the middle ground is going to be a pH of 7. However, if you've got a weak acid and a strong base, this means that the strong base is going to pull the pH of the salt closer to the basic region. So that's what we can see over here. So in order for it to have a pH of 8.5, we're looking for a combination of a strong base and a weak acid. So now let's have a look at our options. So first of all, hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, is going to react with sodium hydroxide, a strong base. So here, strong and strong, right smack in the middle is where our equivalence point is going to be. So this is going to have a pH of 7. Next one, we've got a strong acid and a weak Base. So ammonia is going to be a weak base. So here in that tug of war, the acid is stronger and so it pulls the pH closer to the acidic region. So this is going to have a pH of less than 7. Next up, nitric acid and ammonia. So this is also going to be a strong acid and a weak base as per um, option B as well. Last but not least, methanoic acid. This is going to be a weak acid plus sodium hydroxide, a strong base. So here, the sodium hydroxide is going to be stronger. So let's assume that's seven. Sodium hydroxide is going to have a really high pH. Methanoic acid is going to not be very acidic. So it's going to have a pH quite close to seven. And that middle point is going to be somewhere over here, which is going to be a pH of more than seven. So our option is D. So remember, oic means that it's a carboxylic acid, so it has a COOH functional group. So this is an organic acid. So all organic acids we consider weak acids. Okay, good. So let's have a look at the next question then. So in this question, I've taken it out of the 2017 paper. And quick note, notice how the number is exactly the same as um, the previous uh, year's question as well. And the reason I've just brought this up is because it's really worth kind of looking at all the papers and kind of getting a real feel of how many questions are allocated per each topic. So acids and bases is going to have about four-ish four to five and um, for higher levels. That just kind of helps you um, almost like schedule in your learning which topics require more time and which topics require less time. Okay, so let's get back to the question then. So a buffer is produced by mixing this amount of 0 0.1 moles per decimeters cubed of ethanoic acid, so this is a weak acid, with 0 0.1 moles per decimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide, a strong base. What is the volume of sodium hydroxide required and the pH of the buffer? So 
we are going to be making an acidic buffet here. The reason I know that is because we're always looking for either the weak acid or the weak base. And here, since we've got a weak acid, we know we're going to make an acidic buffet. So the pH is either going to be 4.8, well, it can only be 4.8, but essentially the pH is going to be less than 7. So automatically that eliminates two options for you already. Now let's talk about the recipe for a buffet. So in my previous video, I talked you through two different recipes. You can either have a one-to-one -one molar ratio of the weak acid and its salts with a strong base, or you can have a two-to-one ratio of the weak acid and its strong base. So over here, we're going to go for the two to one ratio because we've got a weak acid and a strong base. So let's calculate the moles of ethanoic acid. So 20, so remember I'm getting the formula for moles using my NCV triangle whereby moles is going to be equal to concentration multiplied by volume. Usually I would convert my volume to decimeters cubed and this is a must whenever you do a paper two question but however because over here all my values are in cubic centimeters and it's a paper one and um, I don't necessarily need to do that right. So um, I'm gonna have my concentrate uh, sorry my volume multiplied by my concentration and then this is going to give me a value of two. So I know that I'm going to have two moles of ethanoic acid and therefore using this second recipe, I know that I'm going to need one mole of a strong base. So I'm going to need one mole of sodium hydroxide. So now to work out the volume, I'm going to use the same NCV triangle. Volume is going to equal to moles over concentration. So that's going to equal to one divided by the concentration, which is 0 0.1. And because we're dividing it by a decimal place, you can kind of divide everything by 10. So that becomes 10 over one, which is the same as 10. So the volume of NaOH needed to generate the buffer solution is D. So the key points to bear in mind are the two like recipes that we use to form buffer solutions. And this is actually a really common question. So I've got another past paper question here that is asking you about um, which mixture is going to make your buffer solution. So here all of our um, all of our options have ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid, and either sodium hydroxide or barium hydroxide. So both of them are going to be strong bases. So remember the ratio that we want is a ratio of two to one in terms of their moles. And the only option, so the only two options that fit them are B and D. So you might be thinking, hang on, they're both technically strong, uh, strong bases. So which one do I choose between? So this is an example of a question whereby sometimes and there are some answers that are more right than others. So even though technically the IB considers both of these strong bases, we consider NaOH the stronger base. And so here, the most appropriate answer would be B. So the reason I've included it in there is just to kind of show you that sometimes, even though the options might be really similar, you're always looking for the most appropriate answer, which in this case is going to be B. All right, last but not least, I thought we could look at a paper two question. So this is a paper two question um, that a lot of students have struggled with. So it's from 2018 and it's question number five. So they are asking you to explain using appropriate equations. So all of your marks are going to come from equations how um, a suitably concentrated solution formed by the partial neutralization of a weak acid with a strong base. So weak acid and a strong base. I know it's a weak acid because it's got oic, so that tells me that it's a carboxylic acid or an organic acid, acts as a buffer solution. Okay, so you're looking for two different equations on how this and sodium hydroxide can act as a buffer solution. So from our earlier video, I told you 
that a buffer solution is able to counteract changes in H plus and in OH minus. And remember, the buffer solution is going to have an acid and a salt. So that's going to form from the partial neutralization. So our first reaction is going to involve the acid. So um, I've put this in red because it was in previous parts of the question. So this is part E, but you got this formula um, previously. So we're going to just use that C C O O H. And I'm also going to write out the formula for its salt. So remember, a salt is also going to have the metal component of the base. So that's going to be N A over there. This salt dissociates into the same um, ion, but now it'll be COO minus. But we kind of write it as the salt so that the examiner knows that you know that there's a salt in the water because it's partial neutralization. So our acid is going to counteract um, changes by reacting with incoming base. And our salt is going to counteract changes in pH by reacting with incoming um, acid, so H+. And this H+, is going to bond to the salt ion to reconstitute the original acid. So that's going to be our original there. And over here, because we've got an acid and a base, we're going to make water and we're going to make salt. Oopsies. 3C C O O minus. Sorry, that's going to be a C. I'll write that properly. Okay, perfect. So the main gist of it are two different reactions. One showing reaction with H plus and the other showing reaction with OH minus to show your buffer solution counteracting changes on either side. So let's have a look at the mark scheme then. So this is what the mark scheme um, would have awarded marks for. So you'll notice that we've opted for this option and this option. The key difference between them is the use of these arrows. So I would always encourage you to do like direct arrows because have a look if you were to do equilibrium arrows you wouldn't get the mark unless you explained that the addition of the OH will shift the equilibrium to the right hand side so I think it's just a lot easier to use direct arrows and um, for these sorts of questions Okay, so that's the end of our past paper video for 18.3. And um, thanks so much for um, having a watch. Hopefully it was beneficial. If you're looking for more resources, online tuition, and more information about our revision courses, do have a look on our website um, for some help as well. So thank you so much, everybody.